Oh my god, I actually got this to work to the keyboard, but uh, I gotta say, man, the uh, the whole form factor and everything, it's just like too, it's not nearly as sturdy as a real keyboard, but uh, yeah, real. So, um, so let me get out of Vim first, so, and, and, uh, Q, uh, yeah, it's just so hard to type on compared to, yeah, because this is in a way, um, among other things, okay, so let's try again, escape, colon, Q, and it's so sensitive that I'm accidentally triggering keys, which is nuts, um, there you go. And then Q exclamation exit. So I'm out of Vim. Um, yes, this keyboard works just as well as these two Kibo key guys, technically, except uh, like the form factor and everything. Um, I'm I'm bumping into the cable while I'm trying to type and all that. Uh, it might help to just make the board completely upside down. Um, that that would actually help, but uh, I'm be honest, it, it just kind of sucks compared to the Kibo. But if I built this into the back of an iPhone case and I had a way to like not bump into this stupid thing and, and flip all the keys upside down, yes, it worked fine. Only thing is, um, uh, give an example, I'll just type upside down on it because uh, it's weird. There you go, a a a a a a a. There you go, and backspace. Uh, Oh, right, right. Um, backspace would be uh, that. So, I can't believe it works. It's so wobbly. I thought maybe I goofed it up when I was trying to solder it, just because uh, my depth perception is so bad, and it is really, really hard to solder safely when you got no depth perception. You're, like, trying to hit that soldering iron in just the right place, and then you make a blob that joins two pins or something. And, you know, I still get, so i got to look at everything under a magnifying glass before I plug it in so it won't fry anything. Um, but anyways, I got it to work.